And back to the last scenario in Sweden fights on. Now this is, uh, what is this, Jankov. Jenko, it's Jenko. Um, 1645, things are really winding down at this point. Uh, it's not a battle I'm at all familiar with. Read the introduction here. It's a Swedish victory. Yeah, historically, um, the armies are very, very worn down by this point in the war. The Swedes are about ready to get out. Uh, even after winning this battle, they were unable to really ca capture anything because they were just so worn down from their victory, whatever. But let's take a look uh, at some of the specifics about this particular uh, situation. First of all, we're here in, uh, we don't have a date there, we have it here, March 6th, but it's cold enough still that the ground is frozen. That has one major effect on the game, which is that all the artillery is allowed to move at a movement rate of 4 in this. Now, they don't mention that. They have the movement allowance, but it's the standard for the game. That should be corrected for this one. Hopefully, if they come out ever with a, a reprint of this one, they'll catch that. Uh, the slopes. I wish the games distinguished slopes as uh, within within the map itself uh, by some kind of uh, imagery. But the slopes in this are going to be uh, steep, which means, and that is actually why you see I've got these little open orders. I've decided everything's in open order. Uh, it'll be easy enough. I'm in, yeah, I'm in make ready here. You know what? I'm not going to leave these guys in open order. They're going to be in line of battle. This is a pure fight. There's no terrain objectives in this, and a lot of the Sweden fight on don't have that little bit. You're here to fight you got 33 whole turns to do it. Nothing to push the issue, but some really scary terrain here. Not only are there the steep slopes, now there aren't a lot. This isn't like uh, White Mountain where, God, you just don't want to fight on that. But then you got this big woods line going through here. You also have these streams, of course little ponds that are going to uh, be impassable, I believe. Let's take a quick look. Uh, see if we got anything else exciting here. We have one other rule that I can think of that kind of affects this. Uh, ah, yeah, two more rules. Okay, one of them is that there's the possibility to call breaks during the day. I don't remember if, uh, did Nordlingham have that? These long battles. I think they would. I seem to remember breaks in one of these games. Doesn't look like they are here. I may be mistaken. The line of the north stuff. Um, so if no wings, if no units are adjacent and no wings have a charge order, I remember these rules from another battle. Uh, either side can declare a break. That's going to take four turns, and everything goes back to receive charge. Everybody goes to morale normal and formation normal or open order at their choice. Cav can recharge. <coughs> this doesn't affect the cav threshold. Um, there needs to be some kind of clarification in there to prevent someone who's winning from just declaring breaks for the rest of the day. I don't see anything... Yeah, they clarify the break when you declare it, but they don't make it so that you can not continue. Um, my feeling is that if there's been at least, if there's been less than four turns since a break, you can't call another one. Give somebody a chance to actually mount an attack, because otherwise if somebody is winning, they can just call the game there. Uh, and that is not, I think, the intention here. This requires a Swedish victory, fairly significant one, over 100 points in order to uh, 
to reach a reasonable victory level in the historical gets you into the decisive victory uh, for that. Should be interesting. Let's take a look at some of the morale. Obviously the Imperials don't look terribly good. The Swedish Cav is fairly strong, although there are some weaker ones down here, morale-wise. Infantry, Swedish infantry is always going to be good comparatively. Swedes have more guns this time. In most of the, uh, in many of the games we've had, the artillery preponderance has been on the Imperial side. This time the Swedes have four 12 pound, 12 to 24 pounds. Uh, the Imperials only have two four to eight pounders, so uh, they're not, they're not uh, as interested in artillery fire. Uh, You'd think the uh, the impetus for attack will be on the Swedes, but here's the thing. Historically, I, I believe the uh, Imperials moved up here and attacked in here while the rest uh, deployed. There's a reason f that that looks kind of appealing because the Swedes are almost in a column type formation, but we'll see. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle things. Nobody's got any kind of charge orders. Everybody's under make ready. We're starting early in the morning here, 8 a.m. Goes on until what? After 6. That stack is the other thing. The Swedes have a bunch of wagons that come on. Now those are just victory points waiting to happen. Um, they come in from the south side, which is the Swedish retreat zone. The Imperials have the north side as theirs. Uh, and they just gotta kinda keep them in command with their central central command here. So that's a pile of points they have to keep under control uh, that they can't let the Imperials get at because that'll be a lot of victory points. Uh, if I recall they're like worth 10 or something like that. So they're not really something you want to let fall. Let's see, 10 points for capturing wagons. Bang! That's not nice. So you definitely don't want to lose that but the Swedes do have uh, at the very least the need to win the battle here. All right, well, we'll start tomorrow morning. I'm not gonna start it today. Okay, because this uh, battle does not, or this game does not reward any territorial things, and really the Imperials have no reason, underlying reason to attack, except perhaps uh, to take advantage of grabbing this higher ground here. The historical situation's not gonna happen which was an Imperial, the Imperials setting up and attacking uh, surrounding the Mountain Chapel here. Um, instead, what I'm seeing is the Swedes have the impetus to make the attack. Now, the question then becomes grabbing terrain, etc. And it's possible the fight may end up sweeping out that way, but what I'm seeing as likely is both sides want to position themselves kind of in the woods, uh, I believe. See, Woods gives an interesting combination in fire and close combat. It gives a defensive benefit for everything except against artillery. Anyhow, the Swedes see that the Imperials don't have a lot of artillery, and they believe they're on the offensive because of the victory conditions, so they're going to sweep through as quickly as they can. On the other hand, the Imperials see some advantage to that, so we may end up with fighting in the woods there, which could be a kind of ugly, weird thing for uh, for games of this uh, period. And we're seeing the field beginning to develop. This is uh, the beginning of the second turn at this point. The Swedish right flank cav actually moved up. If they had gotten a second continuation, they would have been able to actually strike. In fact, they would have been able to strike if they had made their mind up earlier but they kind of moved up cautiously, got a, a, a continuation, moved up to where they're just outside of counter charge range. Nice place to launch your attack from. With these guys in open order, they're gonna have to do something to form up better to face the Swedes. Swedish infantry moving past uh, the defensive terrain up here with the chapel and the farm, just pushing forward, get through the woods, get themselves into position. They're gonna get the uh, left flank cav to help support them. Meanwhile, the Imperials launching an attack in this direction, but the rest of the units positioning themselves uh, to either go straight through the woods or they may just 
position themselves defensively on this kind of plateau area here. They don't want to be below the ridge. It's mixed effects of a, a, a steep slope in this game uh, being on one side or the other of it. But in general, you still want to be on top. The problem with being on top is that your firepower is actually reduced slow out. Your firing die roll is reduced. But your effective fire is reduced from muskets when you're on top of a hill because uh, the balls fall out because <laughs> you've got the angle of inclination down and uh, you know the, the, the cartridges of the time the ball might it was a little looser than it was in some of the later periods all right we'll keep going okay we got a first for me here at the beginning of turn two the Swedes won the initiative now this was com I believe completely random mm, they both had the same number of commands maybe they shouldn't have uh-oh. I don't seem to have ACs on the board either. Right, right. Well, let me come back after uh, I check the rules. Well, a couple of mistakes. One in my setup. I had forgotten to put the army commanders on the board. I've done so now. That doesn't really apply, though. What applied was who, who gets the initiative for the turn. And uh, I rolled a die because they had equal number of wings. But that's not correct. Uh, and I should have known that. In fact, I realized as soon as I did, this is what I get for trying to steal a, 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 an activation while well, I've got a tool running that I can't do anything at work. Um, it just eats up my computer to, to have that tool running. Uh, the worth here is the best commander in terms of initiative rating or in terms of uh, rating uh, for the initiative on the field. Uh, the fact that the army commander Torkinson is better than Hatzfeld doesn't matter. So it actually gives it uh, the initiative automatically to the Catholics. Now what I had been doing was deciding that this is important enough for the Catholics not to get hit here in open order uh, that they would actually attempt to preempt this. This is the first time I've ever done a preemption, I think, in this game. I've done it in the SPQR type, uh, the Great Battles of History series, where I wanted to preempt before a continuation roll. In general, it's a pretty bad idea, and I had actually succeeded, but instead I'm, I'm back to the Catholics, and I don't think the Swedes are as interested in that initial preemption. Yes, it would be a bonus to hit this Catholic force um, while it's in open order, but the cost might be too high and there's a chance that this may not be able to get into good formed position for the attack anyhow so I'll play out the Catholics and see where I can get with them now one thing to notice because of the low number of open order counters in any one particular game of this I kinda had them folded up marked like this with one just for the whole command I've had to unfold that because I'm starting to uh, remove the open order from some of the units, uh, reforming the command as it were. I'll also probably move up here and reform these three. Early approaches are important and that's why I'm focusing so much on this. Well, the uh, Catholics do manage to get some of their forces up, they roll a successful continuation, and the Swedes attempt to interdict that, preempt that. They fail, no continuation marker in place. Now, and I used uh, Hatzfeld's bonus to get the continuation here. And now I've got to decide, do I want to swing into uh, receive charge or stay and make ready? Make ready is a little better because I can move more quickly. I don't get to form as quickly, but I can get most of my units reformed in that time. I should be in pretty good shape by the end of this activation in terms of receiving any possible Swedish charge there. I wanted to point something else out. I am in position, didn't get another continuation, and we'll be going over to the Swedish turn next. But this, uh, you notice there's an infantry unit in here. This is actually a mix of an infantry wing right now. This scenario has two, uh, two setups. Well, uh, this battle has actually three scenarios. One is this early morning scenario, which is going to only handle, I think, the first eight turns or something. And then the next one's a later scenario. I didn't actually see what these uh, boil down to. 
First one is 15 turns, second one is 12 turns. The full one's 33 turns, which is huge. Now the first scenario attaches this infantry here, as does the campaign. But at some point, the second scenario, this infantry is reattached to the center wing where it belongs. So at some point or another in the game, I can make this an all-cav wing. There's no rules for this, but I'm not willing to say, hey, uh, that's got to stay a cav wing. Uh, that's got to stay a mixed wing for the entire battle. But for this initial assault, the infantry support was uh, lent in, and that'll help maybe provide some kind of backbone to the cav attack. I'm not particularly impressed with the idea, but <laughs> I'm going to go with it and see what happens. For the Swedes, uh, having lost their possibility of a continuation to the preempting, their best solution here, there's not a lot of uh, opportunities here because of the open order units. There's only a couple left, only one on the front. So charging without any possibility of a continuation seems like a bad choice. They're going for a ground holding position. They're going to let the uh, they're going to let the Catholics come forward. Uh, you know, essentially they're punting here, but that's okay. Uh, there is a strong advantage to being the reactive side on a charge. Now, make ready means that zero through four is their chance of getting a counter charge off with any given unit. So they're probably going to do a significant amount of damage to the uh, Catholic attack when it happens. And we move our way into turn three with the uh, Swedes pushing their way through the woods. They got one of the guns on Limbered under here. Over here the Cav pushing its way through. Now this is a really tight channel going through the woods is possible, uh, but expensive. The ponds are impassable terrain, even though they kind of look like they have room to move around and they don't. Uh, you got the uh, Catholic right wing cav in position to harass that, the infantry moving up. It's almost looking like it's devolving into two battles, one a big cav battle over here on this wing and another one the main battle over here with no cav on either side. This terrain is really interesting. Um, to my view. Anyway, we'll send this one up.